Welcome to Auto Mundial, the weekly car news and reviews show where this week we have a new special edition Aston Martin, the Vantage F1. The Nissan Murano faces off against the Ford Edge and we take a look at a more frugal alternative to the Mercedes G63. We also have Ford all-electric F-150 Lightning and we have the all-new Cooper Born. Is it a match for Volkswagen's ID3? You can find out later. First though, the news. BMW has begun series production of its latest electric car, the iX. Built at its Dill Golfing plant, BMW has not gone the way of many manufacturers with a dedicated EV production facility. Instead, the iX will be built alongside 5, 7 and 8 series models, following on from a 400 million euro investment into the Bavarian factory. BMW claims that the decision to build the iX in an existing facility alongside combustion powered cars is already benefiting future models of the 5 and 7 series, with electric versions announced for both cars. The investment in the Dill Golfing plant comes as BMW aims to double the percentage of its electric car production, with half of all cars built at the plant to be electrified by 2025. The Aston Martin Vantage is one of our favourite sports cars. It's loud, aggressive and brutal yet with the remarkable ability to settle down and behave itself on a motorway cruise. You might imagine then that Aston doesn't really need to create any track focus version then, but that hasn't stopped them. This is the new Vantage F1 edition. Built as a tribute to this year's Aston Martin Formula One safety car that's sharing duties with the Mercedes AMG GT. The safety car is equipped with medical supplies, fire extinguishers, a racing driver and a yellow flashing light on the roof. And while this road going version does without those special features, it does at least come in the same shade of racing green, although other colour options are available. To complete the F1 makeover, it gets the same aero upgrades including the rear wing and front canards, and some chassis tweaks to improve its on-track performance with 200 kilos of extra downforce. The standard car's AMG V8 has been tuned, upping the power by 25 brake horsepower to 528. Torque is unchanged but is now spread out over a wider rev range. To make the most of the upgraded power unit, the gearbox has also been tweaked to provide crisper shifts. The 0-62 miles per hour time is the same at 3.6 seconds, with a top speed climbing up to 195. To cope with all this extra performance, the suspension has been stiffened, improving turning and traction, while Aston says the ride comfort remains unchanged from the standard car. Carbon ceramic brakes are an optional extra, but only on this coupe version. Roadsters will have to make do with regular steel discs. To top it all off, the bespoke 21-inch wheels are shod in some seriously sticky Pirelli rubber developed especially for the Vantage F1 edition. All of this extra brutishness doesn't come cheap though. Prices for the coupe version start at over £145,000, 20 grand more than a standard Vantage. Unlike the real safety car though, we can't see this one holding up any traffic. In a world full of copy and paste SUVs, the Mercedes G-Class is a refreshing reminder of what 4x4s used to look like. Since its introduction as a military vehicle 40 years ago, the silhouette has barely changed, but incredibly this is the latest model and it's all new. It may look nearly identical to every other G-Wagon, 
But apart from the door handles and spare wheel cover, every part of this old school off-roader has been changed. Last year we featured the AMG Tune G63, a loud, brash and unhinged version with a 577 horsepower V8. But today we're looking at this, the much more sedate G350D. A sensible-ish diesel version designed for comfort and ability, rather than showing off around the posh parts of town. It does still look the part though. It does without the huge alloys and side exit exhausts, but its chrome grille and subtler look still manage to turn heads. Inside, it's every bit the luxury SUV. In fact, there are a few vehicles this side of a Range Rover that offer quite so much equipment. It almost feels like an S-Class as you surround yourself with fine leather and brushed aluminium. It gets the familiar dual-screen infotainment system found throughout the Mercedes range. It's operated via a central click wheel that works brilliantly once you remember to stop trying to press buttons on the screen. It takes some getting used to, especially if you're using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. The whole cabin feels ultra-high quality, though. The materials are all first-class, as is the optional Burnmaster audio system, which looks as good as it sounds. What's really remarkable though is the fit and finish. The G-Class is hand-built in Austria, but there are no creaks and rattles like you find in other handmade cars. Instead, the loudest thing in the cabin is the slight wind noise, something to be expected in a car with the aerodynamic properties of a brick. Powering the G350D is a 3-litre straight-six producing 282 brake horsepower and all the torque that you could ever want. That said, it doesn't feel quick, especially when compared to the fire-breathing AMG version, but it can reach 62 miles per hour in 7.4 seconds and tops out at 124. With 600 newton meters of torque to play with, the 350 never feels like it's running out of puff. It can happily tow up to 3.5 tons, helped by the configurable driving modes. On the motorway, it rides as well as an S-Class. It's almost as quiet, and it can do 500 miles on one tank. It's a hugely impressive everyday car then, but it's not without its drawbacks. For starters, it is expensive, really expensive. It may be significantly cheaper than the AMG version, but it still costs as much as a high-spec Range Rover, and that's hard to justify. So, how about the Range Rover? Well, it's even more refined than the Mercedes and just as well trimmed and equipped. It's also available with hybrid power and does without the try-hard image of the G-Class. It's just as good off-road too. The G-Wagon is famed for its all-terrain ability, but the Range Rover's specialised driving modes will see it through almost anything you can throw at it. What the Rangey doesn't get though is the G-Wagon's character. Few SUVs come with such a sense of occasion, with every trip turned into an event, even with the diesel motor. It's an extremely likeable car, but one you buy with your heart, not your head. The Ford F-150 is a sales phenomenon. It's been America's best-selling truck for over 40 years, and the country's best-selling vehicle of any sort for well over 30. With everything from hybrids and diesels to wild performance models like the Raptor, the F-150 sets the standard for pickup trucks in North America, with the Chevrolet Silverado and Ram 1500 nipping at its heels in terms of sales. Now though, Ford is upping its game yet again. Not satisfied with the new generation of truck for 2021, Ford has gone one step further with this. Described by Chairman Bill Ford as a defining moment for Ford and the American car industry, this could well be the truck that takes EVs truly mainstream in North America. Last year alone, Ford sold three quarters of a million F-Series pickups, so this Lightning could soon outsell Ford's other EV, the Mustang Mach-E. And don't think that this commercial vehicle won't live up to its lightning name. It comes as standard with two motors, four-wheel drive and 563 brake horsepower, meaning the lightning should silently power its way from 0 to 62 in under five seconds. It'll be useful too. Like any American pickup truck, it needs to be able to fit lots of stuff in the back and tow heavy loads. 
Well, the Lightning has a payload of over 900 kilos and can tow more than four and a half tons. This will be the talkiest Ford truck ever made and is designed to be at least as useful as any petrol or diesel powered version. The range is said to be up to 300 miles and it's capable of 150 kilowatt DC fast charging, meaning it can be charged from 15 to 80% in 41 minutes. The new electric powertrain has allowed Ford to get creative with the onboard accessories. It'll be available with onboard scales to weigh your load and adjust the range estimate. And it can even be used to power your house for up to 10 days in the event of a power outage at home. From the outside, it looks pretty much like a standard F-150. But open the bonnet and instead of an engine, there's just a big boot. There are charging sockets everywhere and a massive infotainment system. It won't even be too expensive thanks to the simple body on frame construction that's the same as any other F-150. Due for release in spring next year, the new Lightning will start at just under $40,000, meaning this could well be America's best-selling electric vehicle soon enough. However, Ford isn't the only American mark with an EV pickup truck on the way. This is the new resurrected Hummer, and it's like no truck we've ever seen before. A far cry from the old Humvee military vehicles, this new all-electric off-roader is the fastest, most powerful and greenest Hummer yet. Gone are the old gas-guzzling engines, replaced instead by three electric motors, one at the front and two driving the rear wheels. The result, as estimated by the manufacturer GMC, is a thousand brake horsepower and a frankly hilarious 15 and a half thousand newton meters of torque, enough to tow a small continent and hit 60 miles per hour from rest in three seconds. The cabin is thoroughly modern, with a nod to the old H1 with a huge center console between the front seats. There's plenty of tech on board, including the interestingly named What's to Freedom mode, that unleashes the truck's maximum performance. But perhaps the coolest bit of sci-fi technology is the so-called crab walk function, which effectively allows the Hummer EV to drive sideways for maximum maneuverability. The Hummer then is perhaps a bit silly, a bit over the top, and it's likely to be much more expensive than the affordable F-150. Both of these pickups, however, demonstrate that truck buyers needn't be afraid of the electric future. In fact, it looks like a lot of fun. After the break, the Ford Edge versus the Nissan Murano and an all-new EV from Cupra. Coming up, the new Cupra Born electric hatchback. But first. The Nissan Murano often gets overlooked in the midsize SUV segment in North America. With more and more options flooding the market every year from a broad range of manufacturers, the aging Murano seems to have taken a back seat to the Hyundai Palisades and Chevy Blazers. On the face of it, it's fairly easy to see why. Even with its latest updates, the Murano looks dated compared to many rivals, especially on the inside where you can take a trip back in time to the late noughties. The dash looks a bit old-fashioned, with a plethora of buttons and a relatively small infotainment screen in the middle of them, all with somewhat old-school graphics. It gets all the usual mod cons though, like Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and a genuinely impressive option Bose sound system. However, for 2021, the Murano is being loaded with extra kit. It gets active emergency braking, adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring and a 360 degree parking camera, along with a whole host of bang up to date safety tech. 
And while the cabin may look a bit old hat, it's an exceptionally comfortable environment in which to travel. The big front seats are superb with loads of space and plenty of support. You could travel vast distances in this car without needing to straighten your spine. There's acres of room in the back too, making this a superb long distance family hauler. On the outside, things continue to improve. Rather than conform to the regular boxy shape of many cars in this class, the Murano gets a bold look with lashings of chrome and a tapering roofline. Under the bonnet, you find Nissan's perennial 3.5-litre V6, putting out around 260 horsepower. Nissan has done a better job than Toyota in refining its CVT transmission, and it makes good use of the V6's low-end torque. It isn't the quickest car in this class, but it drives nicely, although we suggest you avoid the front-wheel drive models and splash out on the 4x4. So how does it stack up against its rivals? Well, our current favourite in the North American market is this, the Ford Edge. It may be quite pricey, but it comes with everything you could want in this segment. The styling isn't as bold as the Nissan's, but it's still a handsome machine with a more traditional 4x4 shape and some classy details. The steeply raked rear window and high shoulder lines help to make it stand out, although the look will be a bit too conservative for some. On the inside, though, it looks more contemporary than the Murano. It's still a long way off anything from Mercedes or Jaguar, but the materials are good and, like the Nissan, it comes with every bit of active safety tech we can think of. Ford Sync 3 infotainment system is light years ahead of the Nissan's unit, but it still doesn't come close to most European offerings. It works well enough, but again, at this price point in this class, we'd like something a bit more current. So should you buy a Nissan Murano? In a word, no. Regardless of budget, there are better options out there. The latest Hyundai's and Kia's are already proving popular, while the Ford Edge remains our favourite mid-size SUV. For decades now, if you wanted a cut-price Volkswagen Golf, the obvious choice was the Seat Leon. Indeed, even today, the new Leon is a stylish and affordable alternative to the king of family hatchbacks. But now, with the car industry heading towards electrification, can the VW-owned Spanish brand still offer a thrifty alternative to Volkswagen's new electric hatchback, the ID3? Well, the short answer is no, at least not one with a Seat badge on the front. This is the Cupra Born, the first EV from Seat's offshoot sub-brand. Now the third model in Cupra's lineup, the Bourne shares its MEB platform with the ID3. And as such, it shares the same batteries and motors, with the entry-level model producing 148 brake horsepower from a 45 kilowatt per hour battery. The maximum range is 211 miles, that's six less than the equivalent VW will manage. Above that sits a 201 bhp version with a 260 mile range. Like on the top spec ID3, it incorporates an e-boost function which can temporarily increase power up to 228 brake horsepower. This results in a 0-62 time of 6.6 .6 seconds and is available with either a 58 or 77 kilowatt hour battery for a maximum range of 335 miles. With a rapid charger, the Bourne can gain 62 miles of range in 7 minutes and go from 0 to 80% in 35. On paper then, the Cupra and the VW are near enough identical, so where exactly do they differ? Well, at first, the Bourne styling seems pretty tame considering its bloodline of bold Seats and in-your-face Cupras. In fact, from a distance, you could be forgiven for thinking this was an ID3. Look closer though and you can start to spot those telltale signs that this is something a little bit cooler. It's a little bit lower than the VW, making it look quite sporty. 
The creases are sharp, the bright work is finished in bronze and there is a low, aggressive front end, making it look like the ID3's evil twin. Cupra have said that it's been tuned to feel sportier than the ID3. The interior has been changed too with bucket seats and more bronze bits. The infotainment is different as well with a massive 12 inch screen, two inches bigger than the VW's. So it's an ID3 with a bit of an edge, but where Seats are often seen as cut price VW's, Cupra is something of a more premium alternative to its Spanish parent brand. Prices are yet to be announced, but we would not be surprised if the Bourne costs at least as much as its Volkswagen cousin. One thing is for sure though, the Cupra has an edge that the conservative VW is lacking. The ID3 is a fine car, but its soft edges and approachable demeanor make the sporty Cupra all the more appealing. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we check out the new electric Mercedes EQB.